I'm Scott Simi. I'm the editor-in-chief of Drone DJ, and I'm with Eric Bell, who is a very experienced FPV pilot, works with Drone Boy. Uh, Eric, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Scott. So the reason I'm with Eric today is because we had the DJI FPV drone, and I wanted someone who's a real professional to put this through its paces. You know, I, I fly a tiny whoop around the house. I've put in some time on the simulator, but I did not want to risk crashing this thing on the very first day trying it. So, Eric, what was it like to put this thing up in the air? So, yeah, I think uh, overall it was a great experience. Um, we've got a couple modes that we went through. Um, like any other DJI drone, it's got its, you know, position hold mode and it's got its sport mode. Um, but with this drone, you can actually take full control of it, full manual control. Um, we usually fly things that look like this and this thing can perform pretty much exactly like this thing which I was pretty surprised to see So you mentioned when you said, oh, it handles a bit like a five inch, you said, I'm surprised. Why were you surprised? Clearly you had some <laughs> sort of preconception about what this thing was going to be like to fly. Yeah, I think everybody who flies these drones like we do had a little bit of, you know, expectations. Um, and I don't think a lot of people thought that this thing would perform like the stuff that we fly. And whether it was me listening to them or me looking at it and thinking, hmm, it doesn't look like this or it's a little bit heavier than this. Um, I thought I at first that it wouldn't be able to do the things that it was capable of, but um, eventually it did. And the only thing that I would say that it lacks is um, a bit of a tune. So what we mean by that is that we can change the way that these fly, depending on how they're set up um, and how heavy they are and how responsive you want them to be. We can change numbers so that when you do certain tricks, they don't kind of wig out on you. Um, I was able to get this guy to do that um, when I was doing some loops or some rolls. Um, it did have a little bit of what we call prop wash and it could use a better tune. Now I don't, I know we, we may not have exact flight times, but I know you, you got a couple of flights in, the uh, five and a half minutes I think on one and I'm not sure how long the second one was, but yeah. just tell us your, your sense of what the battery was, was like. Yeah. So. Looking at the back of the battery, it's a, a 6S or a 22.5 20, nominal uh, voltage at uh, 2000 milliamp hours. So we fly a smaller battery on these guys. So this guy definitely has an increased battery capacity than what we usually fly. Um, if we're flying 6S on these guys, we're usually somewhere around the 13 to 1500 range, uh, 1500 being the top end. So this is a 6S 2000. So we did get a lot more flight time out of it. When I was cruising around, um, I was able to chase this guy for an entire battery, land this guy, and then go for another battery on this guy. So in the same conditions, uh, it got double the battery uh, that something like this would. Um, that's not to say that we were pushing it at that point, but you know, when this thing could do uh, five minutes total, this thing got 10 minutes total. 
Now, I realize you didn't take it for a flight in what's called normal mode, but there is a mode in this where it's sort of, you know, level horizon, very predictable, take your hands off the sticks and it'll just hang there and hover. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a certain appeal for that for people who do not have a deep background with flying FPV. Mm -hmm. Wh what's your sense in terms of the people who this drone is going to appeal to? Who do you think is going to be buying this? Yeah, and you know, reading a lot of the comments on some of the videos that have been released, especially on Drone DJ as well, I find a lot of people saying, I've always wanted to get into the cockpit of my drone and fly it like I was the pilot. So I think it'll appeal to those people who have been flying Mavics and you know, they're looking up, how do I put my Mavic gimbal in FPV mode? You know, how do I put it in sport mode? Um, so those guys will pick this up and they'll be able to do all the things that they can with a Mavic and enjoy that you know, pretty long flight time and uh, 4K 60 recording. And then they'll be able to flip it into a mode where you know, it's not uh, fully acro, but it's a lot more um, capable. And then once they're ready to take that step, you know, we've seen that uh, they're going to have a simulator for them to try that. But when they're ready to take that step, they're going to be able to flip it into full acro and do exactly what we're doing with these guys. Now, do you see, it's, it's tough to say because we haven't really gone through the footage yet from this. We just were, were flying it literally uh, an hour ago. Um, but uh, the question really is, do you see a professional use for a drone like this? Assuming that the 4K footage looks really good, you've got a long battery life, uh, you know, you've obviously got, you know, something that's a very different kind of newer product. Do you see potentially a, a market for some professional uses for this? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the guys who are looking for those faster shots, for sure, because uh, Mavics, you know, they have a speed limit. These things will definitely go faster. These motors and this, and this battery are, you know, ample power to go, um, you know, as fast as these guys, 100 kilometers an hour plus. So if they're looking for shots like that, or if they're looking for you know, more dynamic FPV shots, I think it'll be a good contender. Um, we'll see how you know, the, the image transmission back to the goggles, and you know, you're talking about um, a professional scenario. We usually have a feed going to somebody who is watching, if it's a producer or a director or somebody like that. So um, if the feed is good off of this thing, and it can perform like these guys, maybe this will be um, the go-to for, for a job like that. Um, you know, people are recommending DJI. They always want an Inspire or something like that for their professional shoots, and it's in that uh, brand lineup. So maybe it will be prefer preferred over something hand-built like this. What's your best guess on how the FPV community is going to react to this drone? So, I think they'll be surprised. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of resistance from the guys who build these. Um, they're going to look at it and say, oh, it's proprietary. If you crash it, you got to, you know, you got to repair, you got to take it to a repair facility. But I was, I was kind of pleasantly surprised when we unlocked it in manual mode. I was surprised what it could do. Um, it didn't feel too different to me. Um, but you'll have that initial pushback of those guys just kind of uh, brushing it off before they try it, for sure. Now, when you're building a quad like this, obviously weight is a consideration. People are trying to build things that are lean and strong. Yep. This is sort of a squat, fat little thing that <laughs> feels pretty dense. Um, what did you think of the speed of it? I thought it was pretty good. Um, like I said, the punch out wasn't um, as much as one of these would be. But I think DJI also designs their drone systems in such a way that they're maximizing flight time, they're maximizing speed and power. So we may see that, you know, a different battery comes out for this or something like that, that, oh, sorry. And we'll say goodbye to Eric here because right after that little issue with his phone, we developed an audio problem that caused an echo just on the last couple of questions of the interview. So a few quick things to wrap things up. One, I was very impressed with the color and dynamic range the drone was able to capture, uh, especially on a day when it's snowy and it's going in and out of shadows and bright scenes. I thought it handled that very well. There was no tweaking to the color whatsoever, and to me, it was pretty accurate. Two, there is a menu available for tuning some 
aspects of the quad. It's not as uh, comprehensive as, say, Betaflight Configurator, but there was a submenu in the goggles which we just didn't see that day because basically we received the drone, I think, the day before we went out and, and shot this video. The props, you can see the props in this footage. Now, for some people, that's not a big deal. Some people would even want them to be there. But others who want to capture 4K footage for commercial purposes, that could be an issue. Depends on your final output, but it is something worth noting. Also, a quick mention of the motion controller, which we received very late in the game and had just a quick opportunity to try, but it looks very promising and we look forward to a full review and article about that. And finally, a thank you to Eric Bell for flying the drone, to Tom Comet for inviting us out to Drone Boy headquarters for the shoot and for flying that other chase quad, and to Matt for doing a great job with shooting some cover and the interview uh, and just being a great guy to work with. I'm Scott Simi, Editor-in-Chief of Drone DJ, and I look forward to seeing you soon with another video about the new DJI FPV drone.